Welcome to the Extra Pass podcast presented by Melbourne United. I'm your host, Ben Hopkins, joined as always by my co-host, Adam Ballinger. Balls, how are you? I went to the gym this morning, lifted weights. Not that that's a big deal or anything, but if you guys want to talk about that for a while. I actually lifted some weights as well today. I'm uh, rehabbing my MCL, so nice. if I'm being honest, I'm I'm gassed. I'm very tired. Yeah, it's not a big deal. We get up and lift before, like before even coming to work, just getting that work in. But what time are you in the gym? <laughs> Six, about six o'clock. No, I was in at seven. Oh yeah, so you beat me. So now I got, I got to make lunches and stuff like that. Well, another guy who was in the gym this morning, throwing around some heavy iron. Our guest today, Kyle Bowen. Kyle, how are you, mate? I'm good. I'm feeling bad because I was in the in the weight room at eight o'clock, so I was late. <laughs> well, but that your job that you don't have to lift before your job. Your part of your job mm-hmm. is lifting weights. I that missed that for sure. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, that's why I need to get in early because all the big all the big fellas come in. They kick me out. They make me feel small in there, <laughs> which is, isn't very hard to do. <laughs> KB, uh, what's it been like being down here in Melbourne? Man, I'm loving it. I got nothing but good things to say about it. You know, it's a it's a beautiful place. I'm realizing how much culture is runs through Melbourne's blood and I mean from the sport to the footy um to even the coffee shops to the just the beautiful scenes around the around the city so nothing but good things to say about it for sure and I'm loving United. Have you gotten to the footy match what have been your, some of your favorite things to do while you've been here? Yeah so I managed to get to uh the West Coast Essendon game when uh oh, blockbuster oh my gosh uh I was hoping West Coast were going to string two in a row but unfortunately we went down by a point um and the Essendon fans I kind of got a little obnoxious when we kind of got that goal ahead and let, let some fans know about it around me. And then, you know, they were right back, kicked a goal, and they were right on top of me saying saying all sorts of stuff. But, you know, it was a, it was a fun game, uh, amazing experience to go to. So I'm trying to get uh, one of the MCG, and I'm sure I'll get there, but I haven't got there yet. When, you know, when well, was that game, the Essendon game? Yeah, were you there? Because you're a, you're no, a I'm huge Essendon, Essendon fan. Yeah. Was it recent? It was ooh, two, three weeks ago, and – uh, okay. Yeah, they got us by a point. Yeah, one by a point, and then I yeah. think we lost by like a hundred. The next, then we lose by like a hundred and fifty last week. Yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a West Coast fan this season. <laughs> oh yeah, so, you know, well, I'm, Essendon I'm used to talk. That. This this has been footy talk. <laughs> <laughs> People love it. It's the Victorian listenership. They love the footy <laughs> yeah, talk. Yeah. Did you play much footy growing up? I played a little bit. I stopped playing uh, around year seven or eight, and. I did have a great last game, if I if I do say so myself. <laughs> I kicked I kicked six, and you wow. know it was the it was the perfect way to go out. And I'll I'll forever hold that uh you know in high regard. But you know I love basketball too much, so I had to give that up when I was around you know fifteen sixteen, and haven't looked back since. Big full forward or full forward uh, a lot of time in the rock as well. So I was pretty versatile. But um yeah, now my kick shocking. I I was kicking the footy around the other day, and it's it's not. Not a pretty sight. Because when did you hit your growth spurt? Because it's always I always find it interesting. Like some guys are hit it at twelve, and then they're six six, and then they don't grow at all. And then some guys are five eleven until, or some guys are five nine until they're seventeen, and mm-hmm. then they're seven foot when they're eighteen. No, for sure, it's a weird thing, and I've gotten that question a lot uh, as I've been growing up. But I've just always remembered being tall. So I, I think I've just gradually just been that tallest in the class, tallest in my year. So, um. I've always been the ones for playing sports. I was put in basketball at a really, really early age and putting footy in the in the ruck in the full forward. But I don't remember having a year where I grew, you know, four or five inches. I've just always been the, you know, the awkward lanky kid. And now I'm just kind of trying to fill out a little bit. Yeah, this is the exact same with me, actually. Never, never growth spurt. Just I was just, I just remember just yeah. being the tallest kid around. Actually, there was a guy that grew up, one of my, actually, my best friend. Three houses down, small town Indiana. He's my same height, and we were always just the tallest kids around. Um, but yeah, uh, footy. Okay, now footy. This is a controversial topic again. I know we're not talking footy, but I think the ruck is overrated. Anyone ever talk about that? Mm. Is that been something that's ever been discussed? I mean, I, I feel like a a really good ruck can change a game, and a really mm-hmm. bad ruck can hurt you a lot. It seems to me like they cancel each other out. So if the other team doesn't have a ruck, the other guy can just hit it to the, his player every single time. But from the limited time I've watched footy, which may not give me the rights to talk about it, it just seems like no matter who gets who taps it, it's such a – it's – they're not – you can't – it never goes to the right guy. Like it's just – it's such a crapshoot of where the ball's ever going to go, even when you're jumping up and trying to tap it to your guy. No, for sure. I think – I wouldn't necessarily call it overrated because you see – I mean, geez, you see guys like Luke Jackson now who's – kind of that versatile can do like can yeah, do more a than little just bit tap more. the ball yeah so that that stuff's really valuable but it's also just so many talented midfielders like yeah like all, it's so hard to actually thing. get yeah. the ball in, you know when the 
the referee like blindly throws it up or whatever. And um, it's just something to think about. Maybe one of the maybe Essen will get me in for like stri- for strategy sure. type stuff. Yeah, yeah, maybe. just just a different perspective. I'm sure they want Americans talking to him about <laughs> about the, the game. I always find it – I apologize to all the fans who aren't here for footy talk, but this is footy talk. Um, but I always find it crazy in the ruck. It seems like you could blow the whistle and call – like and call – call yeah, blow the whistle on every ruck contest. Like they're always just all over each other, yeah, jumping yeah. all over each other. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the lines are blurred on what you can do. I'm just – I'm surprised with your amount of football knowledge because we had uh, – last year my St. Mary's team – we uh we came to Australia for a foreign tour and we took them to a game in Perth, <laughs> and these guys were mortified about the amount of contact, the way we play the game. It's yeah, just, they did half of them didn't want another another minute of the game, and half of them were just so intrigued and asking for highlights on the bus back. So well, yes, yeah, so I've been here for a long time, but so but the thing that in a footy game, the start of it is when it's so amazing to any American or any other sport really. Like, what other sport are you allowed to just like? hit each other before mm-hmm. the, before it goes up like you're allowed to just like where's a, there's a line that you can't cross but they hit each other hard 100% uh, back and forth back and forth and it's like it's okay like there's no but I don't know what the line is maybe the line is if you hit them above the shoulders or something but yeah, they're can, they're so get, physical it's just getting in people's heads like just a bit yeah. of argy bargy just a imagine, cheeky elbow imagine yeah. an NBA game if they're about to throw it and then like they're just hitting each other in the back as hard as they possibly it's can like, and have you, it'd have be an all out fight have you seen that old clip I think it's um it's going way back. It's like Kent Benson, who was the number one oh, pick. Yeah. And in his, by fir- Kareem. In, his, in his first game, he throws an elbow into yeah. Kareem's gut. And then Kareem just like King, basically King hits him. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think he his job was to beat up Kareem in that game, and Kareem got tired of it. Kent Benson is the guy who bullied Larry Bird when he first got there, and, and Larry Bird left <laughs> like a couple weeks later. So he's also famous for that. Jeez. Well, I was really getting back in the knowledge. <laughs> I wasn't expecting a deep uh, someone to well he, expand on Indiana. me saying it's, Kent Benson. That's uh, Hoosiers talk. Well, we'll we'll stick on basketball. Uh, obviously, you're, you're settling into this team. You've got a, a lot of vets around you as a, as a young guy coming in. What's it been like learning from some of those guys, like especially someone like Barlow, mm-hmm. who's obviously joined the coaching staff, but also someone like Newley, who's made that transition to playing a bit more of the four now. No, yeah, uh, I love how you brought up Barlow first because. I wasn't sure what our relationship was going to be like, especially him being on the coaching staff, but it's been everything I've hoped for and more. Um, he's just so intelligent. And I keep telling, whenever someone asks me to describe Barlow, I just keep saying he's he's just wired differently. He's just the way he looks at the game. It's so simple and so complex at the same time for him. So I've been a sponge around him and just having him in my workouts and him one-on-one teaching me what he what he did to be successful as a four man at Melbourne United, I'm just I'm all ears with that guy. And I got a lot of respect for him. So Barlow has definitely been a great asset to have and to learn from. And then you mentioned Newley as well, who's you know he's almost double my age. He's been around the league and been all around the world playing this game. So to see someone have such a light hearted approach to the game, but also have so much knowledge and you know no certain wrinkles to be like to still be playing at this age and still be so successful um it's just like i'm i'm kind of keeping a close eye on you know like that footwork there or that move there something that i could incorporate into my game so i mean we got a lot of not only veterans in this team but a lot of successful veterans so you know we haven't had cg or delhi or shaley on the floor as much as i'd i'd like to have so far but that'll, that'll come throughout the season i'm really looking forward to learning from those guys too well, you've also got a very experienced NBL four man sitting right next to you mm-hmm. in, in Adam Ballinger. Balls. I wanted to know <laughs> Lucky was you. there was there <laughs> was there anything uh, you wanted to maybe tell KB a, as he sort of enters the the four man fraternity in the NBL? Um, well, I don't I don't know. Uh, we well, any, we any, probably got the same any questions same you height, had him. same build, kind of. You're trying to fill out. I'm trying to <laughs> not be as filled out <laughs> anymore. Um, I don't know. So I, I came in as an import, and that's a bit different, well, quite a bit different than your situation right now. But basketball is basketball. I, I remember I remember always getting told, like, and these are things, like, you don't necessarily hear from coaches and stuff like that. But, like, every now and then, like, a couple extra rebounds matters. Like, if you can get an extra rebound at the end of every quarter or if you can get an extra a couple, like, putbacks, you know, that are just come from hard work, not skill, like, every little stat, like, it matters, especially as an import. Like I remember being told that you gotta you gotta worry about your stats. Like yeah, this is sure. it's part of the job. Uh, more back then than it is now. Um, but I mean, all those little things matters. And like if you can, 
uh, find ways in the game to imprint yourself other than just trying to score the basketball. Um, but I mean, you know, you play four years at college, you're around great coaches. These are all things I think you probably know already. Um, but just a big physical presence down there, you know, is, is a huge asset for a team. And I think from what I've seen out there, uh, it looks like that's where you are already. Oh, I appreciate that. Do you, do you have any maybe contested mid-range jump shot related questions for Ball? Oh, Just yeah. How, how's your mid-range 15-foot uh, mid-range from you the know, corner? It's, it's all right. I'm, I'm kind of more settled at the, the three-point line. I feel like that's where the game is no, right now. No, not but anymore. Maybe back in your day, the, <laughs> the mid-range was the go-to. No, but. no, no. The three, like that's, you know, it's at its peak right now. Yeah. Everybody's shooting threes. It's coming back down. The mid-range is coming back into. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I, I think so. So if you want to. I don't know. You know, that's just my advo- <laughs> advice. I think mid range is coming back. No, I love it. Maybe we can get a one on one. You know, <laughs> but when, out there. I'll, I'll, I'll just shooting competition. One on one, you'd you'd kill me right now. <laughs> well, the one thing you can't do with balls, if he ever asked you to do, is play horse, because mm. balls is the king of horse. Grew up playing horse, no, for in, sure. In cornfields and stuff like that. That's oh. why they called him the the Baron of Bluffton. <laughs> <laughs> I really feel like with horse, like you either got or you don't. You know, like is that really? Yeah, that's intangible. Um, I can still shoot if I don't have to move. <laughs> who, who are you picking on the team if you had to go a horse competition? Who would I want to play? No, no, I'm saying who Who do you think would win if the team had like a uh, whole team-wide horse competition? I mean, CG would be a, an obvious thing. I think just the way you can get that shot off with yeah. whatever, whatever footwork he has. And he can shoot them. from forever oh. away. Like with no it, – it, like it doesn't – like his shot is the same if yeah. he's at half court or if he's at yeah 10 feet away. Zach's got real distance on his shot as well. He's, really? he's handy in horse. There we go. Seems like we've got an all-star lineup. Yeah, we can get, <laughs> get a game going. Let's, yeah. let's do it. Sponsored game. Yeah. Sponsors, jump on. For sure. Well, speaking of sponsors, we're going to go into a quick break and have more with Cole Bowen after this. Melbourne United memberships are on sale now. Lock in your seat for the most exciting show in Australian sport and guarantee you're there for every highlight across next season. To find out more, go to membership.melbourneutd.com.au. And we're back on the Extra Pass podcast presented by Melbourne United with Kyle Bowen. KB, can you take me through what some of your goals are for this season? I know the obvious ones within this team are to compete for a championship, to get all the wins we possibly can, but you coming in after your time in college at St. Mary's, what are your personal goals coming into a team like this? No, for sure you say the obvious one to win a championship, and I think with the caliber of lineup we have this year, it's a it's a very uh, visible goal to have. Um, but personally, I'm just trying to kind of bring that identity that I molded myself to in college. So I kind of I hate using this phrase over and over again, but I gritty not pretty was kind of a uh, my senior year uh, mentality mantra. So just kind of as balls was alluding to, just that physical presence, the guy willing to make that little play every time, um, a guy that, you know, you love being on the same team as and, and hate playing against just because he's so gritty and, and loves to do the little things. So I think just making that presence known, knowing I'm kind of all about the right things, what what Australia basketball is kind of predicated on, I think that's that's something I'm really looking forward to bring to NBL and, and this team. And, you know, I think this, the sky's the limit if you have guys willing to sacrifice that and kind of master their role. So... That's kind of the personal goal for me this year. The gritty, not pretty. I like that. Was oh, that man. a college thing? It was was a, that... The whole town loved it. It was a, It was kind of like was I that take your over. thing or was it like the the, the, the team? Thing? So, no, the origin of it was I, I said it in a post-game interview and oh, then it nice. really it really kind of took What's off. Yours? Sweet. Did they make we T-shirts and stuff? Made T-shirts and, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. My mom's got one. She she requested one that I brought one back. So um, We need to get some Melbourne United gritty, not gritty pretty not T-shirts. Pretty. I'm, yeah. I'm t- it's catchy. It's it, it, I was yeah. surprised about how much it caught on. Copyright that. Did you make any money off of it? No. You probably and I And I wasn't really yeah, you Im- implemented as solid as it has yeah. been. So, um, you know, missed opportunity for sure. We'll talk after the podcast. Oh, for sure. <laughs> well, they used to say the opposite about you. They were like, real pretty, not yeah, gritty. Pretty. <laughs> Beautiful. Hangs out on the three-point line. Doesn't want to be in the paint. I could do it all. <laughs> what rhymes with that? What can, what, like, we'll talk again. Right? I need to come up with something for me too. Exactly. Well, when you, you talk about that Australian style of basketball, and mm-hmm. I guess that extends to the New Zealand style of basketball, we've yeah. got obviously a lot of those guys on this team and have built this team around a lot of local talent. What was that like for you looking at this team as you were considering somewhere to sign and coming back to the NBL? I mean, first of all, deciding what league I was going to come back to, was it was a no-brainer. I love obviously growing up in Australia and playing 
that style of game. And I especially kind of fell in love with it at my time at the COE with uh, under the coaching of Adam Caporn, who kind of instilled those values in all of us and kind of back against the wall. It's, it's us against the world type thing. So um, that brand that Australians have so much pride in of basketball is, is something that I take not lightly at all. Um, and I mean, with the coaching staff led by Dean, I feel like he really personified that. And, uh, you know, we just got the right personnel, not only talent wise, but, you know, as simple as it is bloke wise, you know, it's, we got great blokes around guys who, you know, love to have a laugh and, and really gel off the court. But when it, when it's time to get in between those white lines, it's, it's all business and it's, you know, it's time to work. Yeah. Talk us through some of those personalities. I know you're living with Flynn and, and Malik mm-hmm. Machar. Um, you know, what's, what's that dynamic like? Uh, just a, a, a nice, easygoing household, I would say. No, for sure. I, I absolutely love my Kiwi. So I, I was at St. Mary's with two Quinn Clinton and Dan Foto and, uh, so it was the two Kiwis and then me and Alex Dukas, the two Aussies, and we were kind of inseparable at one point. Um, so I love Kiwis. I love their, their way of life, their kind of, you know, love of banter and everything like that. So me and Flynn for the small time that we've kind of been together, he's obviously doing his FIBA stuff and, you know, we wish him well, the tournament starting today. So, um, for the small time we had together, it was, it was great. It was a great laugh and I'm looking forward to watching him play really well and him coming back and, you know, being a big factor for us. And then. Malith is kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum. He's a bit quiet, but, you know, once you kind of get him going, he, he he's a good laugh. He kind of likes to joke around a bit. Um, and then on the court, I've been really impressed with him as well. He's, I didn't expect him to be so um, athletic and- The big ticket. Oh my gosh, the big ticket in, in every sense of the word. So I think he just tried, he tried to boom on Ariel yesterday, um, which is, I wouldn't even, <laughs> I wouldn't even dare to try that. But I mean, it, it speaks a lot to his game, speaks a lot to ability. So. You know, having those two guys to live with and kind of be in the same position as a young guy and we can kind of talk about stuff from the day and, and reflect on our performance and everything, it's been really good. So it's, it's really helped me settle in for sure. Well, another guy you touch on, Ariel, you've had to spend oh. a lot of time going against him with Joe on the sidelines and Rob Lowe not here yet. Mm-hmm. What's that been like battling with someone who's, you know, he's just he's just a beast? For sure. I think it's a, it's a blessing uh, in disguise for both of us. Uh, I obviously expected to come in here and play a lot of the four, but I think me playing the five, especially against someone like Ariel has been a great experience for me in the sense that, uh, you know, the NBL is a physical league. Um, there's going to be a lot bigger guys in Ariel and I wouldn't say there's going to be as many lob threats as Ariel, but um, there's definitely going to be guys as strong as him and, you know, learning to play against that and playing well, not being flustered by that physicality is something that, you know, I'm really embracing and, I mean, I might not feel it at the at the end of practice or when I'm going to sleep that night when I got bumps and bruises and, you know, my shoulder hurts or whatnot. But, um, you know, Ariel has been great and it, it comes down to, you know, iron sharpens iron. And I think I've been really good for Ariel too, you know, being in his ear, kind of being that that young leader and, and saying, you know, like, you're, it's your time, you know, like, not, if you play well, if you play your game, like not many people are really stopping you. So I think he's he's on the precipice of a really good year. And I mean... Hopefully he does because we're going to need him for sure if we want to make a championship run. You touch on young leader and being in guys' ear. That's one thing I've noticed, especially in our first preseason game against Cal Baptist and Mm -hmm. just out in practice. You're super loud, full of energy. You know, one of those guys who's just always trying to pump people up and and get people going. Is that something that you identified in college as like, yeah, I'm going to do this? Or was that something that when you were in under 12s, you were doing that? I think it really started uh, at the COE again, um, just kind of being in a program that uh, bears the responsibility of a leader and, and has a coach that kind of communicates that with you and, and Capes kind of put that responsibility on me towards the end of my COE career. And then uh, obviously St. Mary's was a big kind of validation for that, that you know that I have that ability to kind of bring lots of energy um, and just kind of inspire confidence in guys. And I think that's something I take a lot of pride of and something that really helps me um, be as good as player as, as I am. And I think that's one of my greatest assets. So I think it's an everyday thing. And, and I really was working on that towards my senior year um, at St. Mary's where I was kind of the core of that uh, leadership group alongside Logan Johnson and Alex Dukes, my two seniors. So that was something that Randy Bennett really – gave us the responsibility for, and it was really a player led program that year. And obviously having the success that we did, it really validated the, the, not only the, you know, the work that we put in, but all of our abilities to lead that way. So, I mean, 
that's something that me and Dean talked about before I came here. And I, I feel like that's my responsibility to kind of lead these young guys and, and not have the old guys need, need to pick me up. So it's something I really, you know, pay attention to every day. Yeah. And college, college coaches love the energy. For sure. Too. Love it. They need it every day. <laughs> You're <laughs> together so much. Um, Coach Izzo was like that too, man. He just loved anyone who would talk and not stop talking. Um, have you found that, yeah, I guess it's easier in college as you get to a senior. So you're there for four years. So as you, if one, if you're one of the top guys with your seniority, it's easier. Have you found coming into this year again, kind of you're at the bottom working your way up to the top again. Um, has it been easier for you to come in as a, as an energy guy? Is it, or is it, you know, does it have your, I guess you're not trying to wait your turn or anything like that. That's, That's one of the skills you're trying to bring. Great question. I think definitely in college, the, the dynamic, between the freshmen and the seniors a lot more different. Um, I was kind of taken aback about how how serious that hierarchy is. Um, but I've definitely found it easier coming here um, to kind of settle in, be that young leader, because it, it doesn't really matter who you are here. It's just as long as you're bringing energy, it's it's all for the common cause. But, you know, that freshman – Freshman, sophomore, junior, senior thing at college is is really yeah. It's, a real, it's, it's not it's, just in the movies. No, it's, it's, it's like it's a, a real thing. You gotta. It's a serious. Wait deal. your turn sometimes. <laughs> no, hundred percent. And it's it was never toxic or anything at St. Yeah, Mary's. Yeah, no, like, no, you know no, what yeah. I mean. But it's definitely a real thing. And but no, like you say, it's it's a little easier in the in the NBL for sure. And getting back to the NBL, getting to United. Um, looking at what we're doing this preseason on the court. Obviously, we've got these two Tazzy games coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, for full transparency, we're recording this on the Friday before these two Tassie games. So the, or at least one of them will have happened by the time this goes out. Let's just speak into existence. KB had 40, 22 rebounds, yeah, eight blocks. Game. Keep it going. Yeah, huge Keep going. game. 40-point <laughs> blowout. But um, what what are you hoping to get out of these games? Just more experience. You know, I think this is the first time that we're actually versing a, a proper NBL team. Obviously, that Cal Baptist game was a good hit out, but – they are a D1 college team, not a not an NBL one professional team. Uh, NBL, sorry, a uh, professional team. So you know, just just gain experience. Obviously, we don't have our full strength lineup, which I think is obviously not ideal. But it's it's great for the young guys. It's great for guys like me to kind of go in there, give it everything you got for a, a good chunk of the game. So um, Tasmania are, are definitely a a tough opponent. They play very aggressively and. And I'm really looking forward to it. I got a lot of respect for Scott Roth and and what he's done over the past couple of years with the with the fresh team of uh, Tasmania. But no, really looking forward to it. I haven't really experienced Tasmania as a as a state too much as well. So I'm looking forward to kind of seeing around there and and kind of experiencing that whole deal. Yeah, it's a young group we're taking. Who are some of the young guys on this team? You know, we're taking a lot of DPS, mm-hmm. a lot of training players, some NBL one guys. Who are some of the the guys on this team that have impressed you that you've been able to? For sure. No, uh, I didn't really know Campbell blog too well, but he's been really, really impressive. Obviously watching from afar of what he's kind of done on the back end of the year for Sandringham was, was amazing. That, that, uh, grand final game and his performance was, was almost enough to get it done. But, uh, you know, he's, he's been one that's really impressed me. His, his kind of leadership. I know he's, he's one of the young guys still, and he's kind of, figuring out his identity in this team. But um, the way he comes in the gym every day is, is very impressive and the way he carries himself. Um, and, I mean, talking about Campbell, you kind of have to talk about TK. They're, them two are kind of inseparable. And, you know, I think those, that Sandra Ham is – I kind of view it as a little brother to Melbourne United, obviously, with our strong connection. And, and I think they're, they're all about the right things and what United's about. So I think for any guy um, who plays for that team, it's, it's real easy for them to kind of – you know, transition over to United. But those two those two young guys have been really impressive. And then obviously A coming back from his injuries. I've yeah. I've experiencing uh all the American athleticism um over my four college years is is impressive. But Ariel fits right into that category. He's one of the most athletic people I've I've seen and, and played against. So I mean those three kind of really, really stand out. Yeah, I'm trying to think in college, were there any guys that you went up against that you would put on the same caliber of athleticism as a because obviously he's still only 21 yeah uh obi toppin oh yeah uh he's definitely he's one of that stands out so we played them when uh when he was on data and he almost i won't leak the name of who he almost baptized but his his waist was literally up to our guy's forehead and he was just tried to front it you know what a front it like kind of throw it in the rim and he just back rimmed it so i mean it would have been one of the nastiest dunks i've seen in person but obi toppin is kind of on that tier for sure 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to find out a little bit more about you after this next break when we get to Fast Five with Balls. I want to stay up to date with everything happening in Melbourne United. Download the Melbourne United app today. Filled with videos, audio and articles about your favourite team. It's the one-stop shop for everything Melbourne United. Download the Melbourne United app via the App Store on iOS or the Google Play Store on Android. And we're back on the Extra Pass podcast presented by Melbourne United and it's time for Fast Five with Balls. Ready? This is Fast Five with Balls. Been waiting for this the whole time. Now we're on to the, uh, the fun stuff. Yeah, they're hard hitting, so I hope you're ready. All right. Kind of hot, straight you into were it. hiding the questions yeah, today. Yeah, well, I can't let you guys see it. I mean, this is top <laughs> secret stuff. I love it. Imagine if he saw all the questions beforehand. You'd have, well, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Probably nothing. Probably the same <laughs> answer. <laughs> all right, Kyle. So I, you're, all right, now let's talk about your, your look. Yep. All right. To me, you got like a lumberjack chic kind of look. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. yeah. And you've already talked about, what was the, what was the saying? Gritty, not pretty. Gritty, not pretty. Yeah. So this is right on. This no, is for on. sure. Yeah. So um, to me, you look like uh, <laughs> you chop wood for fun yeah. and you don't own a TV. Do you own a TV? I do own a TV. Do you chop wood? No, I don't no. know. I can't say I do chop wood, no. <laughs> but is it is that on purpose? Is it just like you're just a gruff guy? Like I guess we already talked about that. Gritty, not pretty. It was just like It's weird. So I think you're pretty. Yeah, yeah. no, thank you. It could I, be. He just decides <laughs> to be to look gritty. But if he wanted to, he could. It's really a, it's, it's funny uh, you say that because there's on the St. Mary's website, there's a, there's a headshot from my freshman year. So yeah, I looked at, every, I Googled you and you look different every yeah. four years. And uh, my freshman year, I walk in there, clean shaven, no yeah. mustache, short hair, pretty middle part. And it's, that's how I came my, uh, my freshman year. And then you look to, you know, my junior, junior, senior, and it's a scruffy beard and mustache, yeah long hair. Part of it is that I don't really like in my haircut. Um, it's too expensive uh, yeah, these no, days. <laughs> it is expensive. And it's, I have trust issues with bar. It's this whole, it's this whole, <laughs> whole deal. And so even in college, I was getting my roommate Alex Dukas to cut my hair. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I trust him more for sure. So more than an actual barber. No, for sure. Part of it's that, um, and then part of it is just kind of it. It's my my style of game too. I kind of yeah, you know, part it of works. it. Is, yeah, I love it. So it's it's the way my game is so might as well just put, like personify it as well you know nice. embrace it well so. I'm, I'm gonna have to put you on the spot and i know you haven't had heaps of time with them but which one of your two roommates would you trust most to cut your hair this year i'd hate to I, i'm sorry malith but i have to say flynn <laughs> but i don't think it's gonna get to that i'm gonna i need to hunt down that's that's something i need to do i need to hunt down a good a good barber they're barber. everywhere here they're all yep. over the place yep um all right good answer good uh, good question too if i may say so myself <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, you played as a DP for Perth um, for a year and then decided to go the, the college route. What was the thought process that went into that? You know, it was a, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it was definitely a tough decision for me to decide whether the NBL was the right route for me or or Div 1. And, and if I'm being honest, there was a point, <clears throat> excuse me, there was a point where- Did you some water, bro? No, nah, I'm good, I'm good. There was a point where I was wholeheartedly set on staying in Australia and playing the NBL, but- uh, I was fortunate enough because I look back on my college career now with absolutely no regrets, loved every experience of it. Uh, but I was fortunate enough to have some, some good mentors in my ear who were obviously a bit older, been through, been through the ranks and, and seeing what college can do for players. And, uh, one of them, if I, if I say is Nick Lakovich, who was my, uh, NBL one coach, uh, as I grow up in uh, Perth and in the Redbacks program. So he was kind of the, the main standout who said, you know, MBO is always going to be there. So once you say no to college, it's a, it's a, it's a gone opportunity. And that, that really changed my perspective. And, you know, I look back now, like I say, with no regrets and I, and I loved every experience of not only, you know, college basketball, but America as well. So, um, no props to props to the mentors that were in my ear because, you know, I definitely feel like I made the right decision. Yeah. It's a unique experience. It doesn't always work. Mm -hmm. especially for like we talk about australians going over to america it's not always a lot of times if you especially a smaller school like in south dakota or something like that's like for you sure. know that's not the right it's not where everybody wants to be but it is like a it's it's not real life like college life mm -hmm. like the basketball part is hard hard yeah. work but college life is like i say it's like a 24-hour sleepover 
No, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, quit. all you, the kids are the same age. No one has money. You're just hanging out. Yeah. There's always something to do. <laughs> now that I'm, I'm not really right back into the real world now because yeah. I know the professional yeah, no, athlete world yet, isn't the yeah, isn't no, the real, it's not. But, <laughs> it's still not. But, but it's more real than my time. Yeah, you definitely it's more real than college. Yeah, you recognize the bubble you're in and the yeah. <laughs> you don't have any stress. You know, you you worry about practicing the next day yeah, or anything. But in school and that's it. You no, know, but it's a it's a beautiful world to live in for sure. So love those four years. Like sad now. I want to go back to college. <laughs> Me too. Me uh, too. I would rather go back now. If I went back now, I would just want to be a normal student though. Like, yeah, <laughs> I was no. like, how easy do normal students have? You don't even have to go to practice. For sure. Okay, moving on. Um, okay, uh, we don't know each other very well, so I didn't, these are kind of generic questions. Yeah. What was your first video game system? Did you play video games? <sighs> yeah, I, I did play a lot of video games growing up. I'll say a, a, P, a PlayStation 2. So the PlayStation 2, huh? So you were born That's in it, 2000. Yeah. So yeah. when did you get that? What age? Do you remember? I don't even, I don't really know. It was back when I was growing up, you were, you were out on the trampolines or yeah. you know, playing the driveway most of the time. So it was, it was pretty late, but now I'm up to date with all the, oh, now all you're the games. I feel it. like it's a, it's a good way to connect with, with people around the world. So I'm still playing with the guys who oh, I good. went so to college do, with. Do you remember like any that. games you played back then, like on PlayStation 2? Mm. Was it mostly sports games? Yeah, mostly sports games. I played a... Uh, WWE SmackDown versus Raw. That's, <laughs> Elite. that's a Classic. we had every WWE SmackDown versus <laughs> Raw uh, game. It's a high yeah high level game, and uh, I was getting nostalgia yesterday. Jay was playing uh, all the walkout oh, all yeah, walkout theme songs to the wrestlers. <laughs> so we had John Cena rapping. We had Rey Mysterio's Six One Nine. Do you have a personal favorite? What's yeah, your personal did favorite? You Rey, yeah, no, Rey Mysterio's oh, my go to. So all the Hardy guy. brothers. We are uh, <laughs> funny story. So me and my neighbors used to. Stat, we had the exact same trampoline, so yeah. we used to stack one. So one was on forty five degrees, and one was flat. And then we would we we all got re like Rey Mysterio muscle, <laughs> like homemade Hardy sleeves, and we would just like practice the moves and have like wrestling competitions for hours. So no, we were we were hardcore at one point, and you know, looking back on it now, like watching wrestling now, it's not the same. It's like you're infatuated as a child, yeah, just watching it like. Fighting with my older sister, saying like, "No, it's real, it's real." Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you think it's yeah. real, it's oh, way different. No, for sure. So, no, good, good memories, good days with uh, with WWE. All right. So, what do you do now? Like with your with your free time, you got hobbies. You watch a lot of TV. Read, you read books. Yeah. Well, that's that's one thing I'm noticing with with this kind of this professional life. You you finish the day at one o'clock and then you yeah, got the, one the rest two. of the day. So that's the part that's not real life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that'd be ben nice. I'll tell you. It's, yeah. That'd it's, be fun. It's wild. So you know, I'm kind of learning uh how to fill that time up i'm i'm looking at cameras to kind of buy because i'm really into photography nice um nice. so the plan is to kind of get a get a real high quality camera and, and go around and capture the beauty of melbourne nature uh, nature or people or every, just, it would be more yeah. it would be more like street photography and, and nice. stuff like that so um definitely looking looking for that um but apart from that just i'm a big napper get yeah. get a nap in at least five times a week yeah. you know, it, it, <laughs> when you go back yeah. you have a nap from like two to three, oh, or like man. three yeah to it's four. real yeah. quiet it's yeah. real quiet in our household between <laughs> between two to four so um napping reading just just keeping it really chilled so and then obviously just experiencing the culture of melbourne I, I love going out to dinner and in places and me and ben have talked about um shout out to applehead deli oh applehead deli oh it's yeah. my heart no exactly so you know it's, it's great food great coffee great people in melbourne so there's plenty to do so i'm just i'm kind of filling up my time and in a couple of different ways. All right. Now the last one is here we go. No, this is so. <laughs> I always ask about CDs. You were born in two thousand. Yeah. Do you have you ever seen a CD? <laughs> I have seen a CD. I was. You don't I'm, own it. You never bought a CD. Right? See, no, it's, it's kind of just. I'm a little. I got a little vintage in my heart. You know, I'm a. I own a record player at home. Oh, but nice. But it's not. I don't have old records yeah yeah like you know it'd be yeah, yeah yeah it'd be vinyls of of new new music yeah yeah but, i like I'm, I'm, but they're again you know, it's like 70 bucks to drop yeah. on on one album for sure but no i appreciate i appreciate old things and i have had my fair share of cds i did have did go through the phase of this the so fresh mixes if you guys remember that <laughs> those yeah. were you know those were in so you did necessity. get those like yeah you did for have sure those i'm around. right on the cusp but maybe uh, if i was, yes, if I was born wonder. a few years later then I would have missed out. And by the time you're 15, is like 2015. Yeah. But you like, so you fresh was hot back then. Like you're still yeah. listening That's, to CDs in when you're like seven. Yeah, but you don't buy them. You don't buy like your first mm. bought CD was a big deal. Yeah. You remember yours, Ben? I think we talked about it before. I think it was uh, Welcome to the Black Parade by we have talked about My this. Chemical yeah. Romance. Great CD. Mine was Big Pun, Big yeah, Punisher. You, <laughs> That's a great album. You guys should get your hands on that if you can. Great Punisher, right. big Punisher, no. and just and DMX. DMX's yep. first album too. What's what's the last CD you bought, Balls? Most recent. Most recently, 
Uh, I bought. I found both Silver Chair albums. Very Frog nice. Stomp and Neon Ballroom, two dollars each. If you can believe it, yeah. man, that's so good. I mean, that those two albums back to back are just, I, I just incredible, honestly. And to think he's fourteen years old. <laughs> My son's fourteen. We were listening to. I was like, this guy's fourteen years old when he wrote this. Couldn't believe it. So, are you still using CDs? Oh yeah, yes. I got a van. Nothing else works in it. Only wow. a CD player. <laughs> I, no, I respect that. There's a lot of respect for that. Yeah, but uh, sure. yeah, but I mean, so we grew. I grew up with it. Ben just he's just an old soul too. He's got how many CDs you got? Oh, hundreds. Yeah, hundreds. Like, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And the the aux doesn't work in my car. Yeah, neither so does mine. So Literally, yes, that's the problem. Yeah, dri yeah. Driving to work today, and I have like it's like an hour and a half drive to work every Oof. day for me. So today it was uh, the Living End debut album. But I also got for two dollars, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it was "Fly or Die" by Nerd. Two oh, yeah. terrific albums. Just, that are just, I love that. Yeah, it's yeah, good. Any any people listening, just you know, get involved. <laughs> buy some CDs. Yeah, sure. yeah, Go to your local op shop. Keep it alive. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. Yeah. No, keep it alive. It's a dying luxury. Yeah, it's physical media. Mm -hmm. Um, so you don't, but so you don't own any CDs. I guess I didn't have an answer. Yeah, I was, didn't have a question. What was the last CD you bought? That's I would almost say. So fresh. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, actually you in saying that, those, those are easy to find. I do remember days. me and my uh, roommates at the, at the Institute, we had a similar problem where the aux cord didn't work. So, um, <laughs> burn CDs. Yeah. Like you and burn we're, them. Yeah, we're yeah. all cramped into, it was Isaiah Lee, his, his little civic car fit five, as you can imagine. Yeah. Two, three of us, three of us were big guys. So yeah. it's, you know, we're, we're battling for front seat, but we had to slide in a, a CD, but we were more on the, the Kendrick Lamar's, the, you know the the hip hop for sure. But no one bought that. I'm assuming you. Just no, we we bought that really? was the, that was Actually the thing. The aux cord didn't didn't work. So yeah, we but were, you could download it. What LimeWire or whatever. Stop talking about burning CD. <laughs> I'm just saying that was the perfect time. You bring to do it, it up. People every were doing time. it. I don't bring it up. Other people bring it up. You just brought did. It you up. buy it? You bought. The we CD. bought the CDs at JB Hi-Fi. We had to physically nice. put the disc in the car. So you know, but nice. that was yeah. Was I'm not a. I, I never burnt anything. Stop, I, to, I stop can, trying to uh, expose our players. <laughs> I can. Uh, I got proof, but that's great. Bought a CD. Yeah, Good job. To be, so to he's find born out, in yeah. 2000. Buy CDs. The world's okay. Yep. But I'm. I'm probably the last of the. Yeah. The last <laughs> the of the generation. Last, definitely the last. Yeah. Of them. They well, still make them, but we need to get one of our training players, Joel Foxwell, on. He was born in 2006. Oh yeah. Wow. Probably that's never, crazy to me. Probably yeah. never even heard of a CD. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, he probably wouldn't know how to work it. You know how you ever seen the videos of kids trying to yeah. use, like, a phone, like a rotary phone? Yeah. And like, I don't know, what is this? It's bad. Old guys talking. Yeah, exactly. Just <laughs> well, some of us are old guys. Yeah, no kidding. How, how old are you, Kyle? 23? 22. 22? Yeah. Almost double your age. One year less. How old are you, Ben? 26. Jeez. I should start my own podcast yeah, with guys are. my age. <laughs> just you rambling just rambling about yeah. this old man yells at cloud taken <laughs> probably well kb thanks so much for coming on the podcast we appreciate getting to know you a bit better and and hearing how you've settled into this team we're so excited for september 28 when we can you know see it game one throw down against the phoenix at john kane arena for sure and no, i appreciate you guys thanks gritty not pretty gritty not pretty baby gritty not pretty <laughs> <laughs>